Hey guys, Andy Robertson here with CQE Academy, and I am so incredibly excited for today's video. Big news, big announcement, ASQ just released the fu a future revision to the CQE Body Knowledge, and I absolutely had to shoot this video to help people like you students on that journey to become a CQE understand when those changes take effect, as well as what new topics are being added to both the CQE Body of Knowledge and are gonna be covered on the CQE exam. By the way, stick around to the very end. I've got a bunch of free resources to help you on that journey to become a CQE. And of course, in the future, I want to create more content specifically around risk management. As you watch this video, you're going to learn that risk management is becoming more important in the world of quality engineering as well as in the body of knowledge. And so I want to create that for the future. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. That way, as I publish that new content around risk management, you get notified and you can stay on that journey to become a CQE. Anyways, let's head over to the computer and get started. Hey everyone, Andy here, and I wanted to shoot a quick video just to talk about the recent changes to the, the CQE body of knowledge. This information just came out a few days ago, but I wanted to give everybody a heads up as to what's going to be happening in the future. So real quickly, I want to talk about when the changes are going to take effect. I know a lot of you, you guys are out there studying for the exam. I want to make sure you know if this change is going to affect you or not. And then of course, if this change does affect you, I want to talk about how the actual exam itself is going to change, right? When the, when the changes happen. And then I actually want to go through specifically through all seven pillars of the body of knowledge and talk about which topics are being added and removed and emphasized or de-emphasized on the actual exam. So let's start with when the exam changes take effect. So if your exam is going to be scheduled for after October 1st, this new body of knowledge will apply to you. But if you're taking the exam here in April or June or August, you're totally fine. Don't worry about any of these changes. You can just turn this off and keep following the course the way it is laid out. But again, remember, if your exam is after October 1st, 2022 or later, these changes will apply to you. Now, I want to start with helping you understand how these changes affect the big picture uh, exam itself. So if you look at the current body of knowledge, the 2015 body of knowledge, these are the, the number of questions from each pillar on the exam. So there's seven pillars, management, leadership, quality system, design, control, continuous improvement, statistics, and risk management. And then, of course, in total, there are 160 questions on the exam. Now, one of the things that ASQ likes to change every time they revise the body of knowledge is is essentially how many questions come from each pillar. So I've kind of sh I've showed those changes here. Uh, red is a decrease in questions and green is an increase. Now the first and probably the most obvious increase is risk management. So ASQ with you know over the over the years risk management has been emphasized in the ISO standard and and throughout industry and so they want to make sure that that change that emphasis on risk management is reflected in the body of knowledge and also on the exam. So you'll notice risk management is getting six more questions on the exam. And then specifically when we go topic by topic, which is what I want to do next, when we go through each of these topics, what you're going to find is that the majority of changes to the body of knowledge happen here in risk management. Everything else is pretty minor in terms of add additions or removals. Risk management is the big one. So let's do that now. Let's go through each one of these pillars individually so that you can have a good understanding of what new information is being added and what's being subtracted. So here's how I actually want to lay out the, the entire video. So you'll notice across the top, this is the pillar, management leadership, and it's, it's actually losing one question on the overall exam. And then as we go through these pillars, I want to talk to you about three different things. New content that's being added to the body of knowledge, information that's being removed from the body of knowledge, and then what I would call an increase or a decrease in the level of understanding. So the way the body of knowledge is laid out is every topic on the exam comes with what's called Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning. And so next to every topic is a little word in parentheses. Remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And essentially, the, the bigger this number is on the pyramid here, or the, the, the higher up you go on the pyramid, the deeper you have to understand that concept, right? The better you have to understand it. And so in a lot of situations, topics are being decreased in terms of your cognition level. So you'll see a lot of topics go from analyze down to apply. Essentially, we're decreasing or we're de-emphasizing that particular topic. Uh, and then some topics you'll see an increase in the cognition level. And that essentially means on exam day, the questions from that topic are gonna get a little bit harder. So that's what I mean by increase or decrease because that is happening. And then of course we have straight up additions and removals. 
Now, within management leadership, none of the changes or none of the none of the topics are changing their cognition level. So that's that's a good good start there. In terms of removals, the theory of constraints is being removed from the entire body of knowledge. So it's being removed here from management leadership, and it's also being removed from continuous improvement. This is the one change that ASQ made that, that I don't necessarily agree with. I particularly like the theory of constraints, and I think it's a good perspective that quality engineers should have, but unfortunately it's being removed from the body of knowledge. The other removal here is PERT and CPM. These are project management tools. Now, I, I think this is a good change, right? Because to me, project management, all of these different, you know, PERT chart, activity network diagram, critical path method, Gantt chart, all of these different techniques have all been merged into what I would just call this umbrella of project management. So I like that they're removing the, what I would quote, you know, the, the quote unquote individual project management techniques and just talking about project management as a whole. You know, one thing that is being removed from management leadership is is QFD or quality function deployment. I put this asterisk here because it's not being removed entirely from the body of knowledge. You'll still find this in product and process design. It's just being removed from the management and leadership pillar. Now, in terms of topics that are being added to the body of knowledge, I really like these two additions. So here under deployment te techniques from the quality management system, they're adding cost benefit analysis, which I think is a fantastic perspective and tool that, that we should all be comfortable using. And they're also adding a really nice project management tool called the RACI matrix. And so these are two new lectures, probably one new lecture that I'll have to add to the course to teach these new topics, but nothing too major here in management leadership. The quality system is also pretty similar in terms of, uh, in terms of its update. No, no topics are being increased or decreased. Nothing's being removed. And the only addition is risk management in quality auditing. So here in auditing, they're adding this, this thought process or mentality around assessing risks in your audit planning. Uh, and, and, that, and to me, that just goes along with this whole theme that risk management is even more important than it used to be. Okay, moving on here, product and process design. So in terms of decreases to your cognition level or the, the amount of understanding you need to have of a given topic, reliability indices like mean time to failure and mean time between failure is being decreased as well as reliability tools and hazard tools, uh, that is also being decreased. Nothing's being removed from the body of knowledge, but we are seeing some additions. So if you go here to design inputs, techniques, and reviews, they're adding uh, another tool or another concept to design inputs, which is critical to quality, and they're adding something called the requirements matrix. And to me, this falls under a lot under design V&V work. You know, if you're, if you're verifying that your design outputs meet your design inputs, you should have some sort of requirement traceability, right, where you demonstrate that some testing was performed to, to confirm that your design inputs were met by your design outputs. And so again, in terms of the course itself, I'll probably add one or maybe two more lectures here to account for these new topics. The other thing that's being added, and again, this, this goes along with the whole theme of risk management, is the use FMEA. So down here in reliability slash safety slash hazard assessment tools uh, to go along with the DFMEA and the PFMEA, we'll also need to learn in the future about the use of MEA, which I think is good. If your product could be misused in some way that might introduce some risks to, to the end user or whomever, I think you know during the design phase, you should be considering how your product is going to be used or possibly misused, and that should factor into your design, right? Your design should be robust enough to handle different use cases. So the use FMEA is a good tool that they're adding. I've also highlighted these downgrades here. So I mentioned the decrease. You'll notice here that uh, reliability and maintainability indices, this was decreased to apply. And then down here under reliability tools, this was decreased to analyze. So that's those changes. Under product and process control, so a few things are being decreased. Uh, the idea of sampling concepts like AQL, LTPD, AOQL, those sort of things. Metrology is also being decreased in terms of the level of understanding. In terms of removals from the body of knowledge, average outgoing quality and average outgoing quality limit have both been removed from the body of knowledge. The other, if you, by the way, if you go back and just kind of do a gap assessment, the other wording that they removed from this particular sentence is single, double, and multiple sampling plans. I put an asterisk here because ANSI Z1.4 is still included as a topic under sampling standards and plans. 
and the, the Z1.4 standard has single and double plans. And so even though these words were removed from the body of knowledge, you still have to understand how a double sampling plan works. And I think this topic itself will actually stay on the in the body of knowledge and on the exam. Dodge Romic tables are being removed from the body of knowledge. I think that's a I think that's a good change. I think these are pretty infrequently used in industry, and I think this was a good addition to the body of knowledge. If you look at updates, the only change was here in measurement tools. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about gauge blocks and calipers. Most industries today, or a lot of industries, use CMMs to to measure components, especially components with really tight tolerances. And so they've added the CMM as another measurement tool that you should be familiar with on exam day. Here in continuous improvement, they did reduce the cognition level for continuous improvement methods. So if you look here, continuous improvement methods, they re they downgraded it from evaluate down to analyze. And then the other change they made, which I already kind of talked about, is they removed the theory of constraints. I will leave that lecture in the course until the body of knowledge changes. But just know that if your exam is after October, you can just skip over that theory of constraints uh, lecture. In terms of additions to the course, I really like these. They're adding two more. Five Ys, which is already included in the course as a bonus lecture, and OEE. I'm actually a huge fan of OEE, uh, so I'm excited to shoot a lecture and teach you guys about OEE. And I do think that's a good addition. I, I think the OEE of your equipment is a reflection of the health and the robustness and the quality of that equipment. So I do think OEE is a really important concept that quality engineers should absolutely understand. Now, here in statistics, a, lo a lot is changing, actually. So we've, we've increased some things. So the probability terms like independence and mutual exclusivity, that uh, cognition level has gone up, as well as goodness of fit testing. So that's a, you know, it's hypothesis testing for attribute data. That uh, cognition level is going up. We are decreasing, or ASQ is decreasing, the cognition level for linear regression and linear correlation. Uh, so you'll see that in the new body of knowledge. In terms of removals, they're removing a handful of things. Graphical methods for depicting distributions. So this was uh, this was chapter one in the course. This is things like stem and leaf plots and box and whisker plots. I put a little bit a little asterisk here because they're technically merging that with graphical methods for depicting relationships. So there's still a chance that that you might see questions on the exam about stem and leaf plots or box and whisker plots. I'm waiting here to see if this is more of a more of a clerical change and those topics will still be included in the body of knowledge. But the bivariate normal distribution, you know, to me, I don't even know if we cover this in the course. I don't ask any questions about it in any of the practice exams. I'm glad they removed this because I think it's a pretty obscure, infrequently used distribution. The chi-squared distribution was also removed from probability distributions. Now, I put an asterisk here because I think this was a mistake. You know, you know, if you're talking about goodness of fit testing or confidence intervals for, for standard deviation or, or variance or hypothesis testing, you need to understand the chi-squared distribution. So I actually don't like that they removed this from the body of knowledge. But another another change they did uh, they did remove pre control which I think was a good idea. You know, to me pre control is not a commonly used tool, and to me it's also not based on good statistical rationale. So I like that they removed pre control. The other thing in DOE is they removed one factor experiments, things like Latin squares. I know we've talked about that in office hours recently, but this idea of Latin squares and one factor DOE is being removed from the body of knowledge. Now, the one addition here, and I really like this, is all about data. So a big part of statistics and collecting data is chapter one, where we're collecting data. And, and as the world becomes more technology-driven and more automated, digital data or electronic data is becoming far more popular and more common than, than data collected on check sheets or on paper. And so I think quality engineers need to understand how, how data could be collected and how you might integrate your equipment to automate data collection and how we as quality engineers fit into this idea of ensuring data integrity and data accuracy. So I think this was a really good addition to the body of knowledge. Now on to the big one. This is all about risk management. So in terms of increases and decreases to cognition level, there was none. There was no removals from the body of knowledge, but there were a lot of additions. So you'll notice here we're adding six more questions and they've restructured the body of knowledge and, and changed around all the different chapters and topics. The first one is risk fundamentals, where we've got risk terminology and types of risk management. Now, I've put an asterisk here next to risk terminology because we, we already cover this in the course, right? These are those standard terms in risk management. 
they just called it a different chapter, basically. The other big change, and, and you'll see this here, is risk treatment, control, and monitoring. And I think this is where these six extra questions are going to come from. And it's topics like having a risk management system, how do you and how do you evaluate your risk management system by using things like auditing techniques and testing controls? What is this idea of a risk register, right? If you're identifying risks or gaps, how do you document all that in something like a risk a risk register? And then how do you how do you address risks, right? What are the different strategies? You do you avoid it? Do you mitigate it? Do you transfer it? Or ultimately do you have to accept some level of risk? And then risk monitoring, right? Are we are we trending complaints? Are we tracking complaints? What level of post-market surveillance are we doing in to, to ensure that we're monitoring the level of risk our customers are experiencing? And then finally, risk mitigation planning. These are all new topics. I'll be creating new lectures in the course to cover all of this stuff. I, obviously, the most important, if you're a new, new student here to uh, the masterclass, is things like statistics and continuous improvement. So those will kind of be focus number one. I want to make sure to get new lectures in the course now so that, you know, as you go through it, you're studying and you're preparing for the October exam. All right, that is it for today. Hey, if you're looking to stay on this journey to become a CQ and you want to continue learning and growing, head over to cqeacademy.com. I've just got a ton of stuff, practice exams, study plans, uh, cheat sheets, tips, advice, all sorts of free content, video training to help you on your journey to become a CQE. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I especially want to create more content around risk management. Obviously, that's becoming much, much more important in the industry for quality engineers. And so I want to put out more free stuff to help you on that journey. So again, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and head over to CQE Academy and take advantage of all the free stuff there to help you on your journey. All right, that's it for me. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.